reusable interfacings have come a long way since they started out in the 70s. But a few years ago, we noticed that some of our favorite interfacings were sort of disappearing, not available anymore. And Patty Palmer and I decided that we needed a line of interfacings that worked and worked everywhere we could possibly use a fusible interfacing. Now I will say there are some cases where fusibles don't work. For instance, this is a seersucker fabric. And if we fused to it, we'd lose the puckering. So in that case, we use a glue-in or sew-in interfacing. This happens to be silk organza. And we've just glued it along the outside edge of the whole piece. So it's interfaced but not fused. And so that's what you would use if you couldn't use a fusible like on velvet as well. However, for most purposes, we have great luck with fusibles. One of our favorites is called Perfect Fuse Sheer, and it's for smooth fabrics. Remember the interfacings that used to bubble and pucker? This doesn't do that. And it's perfect for um, silk. This is on a silk collar, and it's of course on the cuff as well. And this is almost a see-through cotton. And this is the type of thing where we used to put a fusible interfacing and you saw the little fusy dots or after you washed it, it bubbled. This has been washed and it comes out beautifully. So the shear really solves that problem. Another one we really like is called Perfect Fuse Light. And it's a textured interfacing. It's got some body to it, but it's soft. It doesn't make it crisp, it's soft. And What's fabulous for that is you can use it to give body to a garment where you want an underlining. So in this jacket, I've basically underlined the main pieces with the light to give them body. I've used a different interfacing on the front section and that I'll talk about in a little bit as well. Then, all of our interfacings have directions specifically for the interfacing. They're very concise and designed to help you use the interfacing and uh, how to, where to place it, how to cut it, and how to fuse it. So it makes the interfacing very, very easy to use. The medium I've used on a jacket that I wasn't going to do a tailored type construction on. It's a softer, more casual style. And I've put it on the facing. It would also go on a jacket that you weren't lining on the facing. And I've put it on the upper collar. Have you ever done a jacket out of a loosely woven silk or a wool that after you wore it for a bit, it just got wimpy? Well, that's the beauty of interfacing today. So this jacket has a heavier interfacing in the front, but throughout the back and the sides, I've used the light to give it body. So even after wearing and cleaning, it still holds up beautifully. For this DVD, we're talking about tailoring and garments with more construction. And for that, we have our Perfect Fuse Tailor. And our new version is called Tailor Ultra. We just love this. It's new, so new it wasn't in our jacket book. But we've discovered it since. And one of the beauties of this particular product is that it actually has crosswise give. So in stretch woven fabrics, you can interface and it still will have body. So that generally goes in the front. So generally, if you're doing a tailored type jacket where you have um, pockets and lots of construction, the Tailor Ultra goes in the front. I also have put it in the under collar, but I've put the light on the facing and then the rest of the body of this silk jacket. It just makes it wear better. Yes, you do need to always test. So I have a sample where I've tested a couple of different interfacings and I fold it in half and see how they work together. Do I like how it feels? I might change one or the other. So I have another sample here. So do test always. And you'll find that fusible interfacings work beautifully in jackets today. I'm going to show you how to cut and then how to fuse the interfacing as well. I placed my pattern on the interfacing. This interfacing is really wide so I can actually get another two uh, jacket fronts out of the rest of the interfacing. So one yard does two jackets. I've laid the pattern on so that the extra part of the hem is just off the edge of the, of the interfacing. I don't need the whole hem in the interfacing. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut along one 
front edge and the neckline. And then I'm going to unpin and scoot the pattern over about 5 eighths of an inch and cut the other side. This way the pattern will just be smaller than the uh, tissue, the interface will be smaller than the tissue and won't um, get caught on the ironing board when I do my fusing. So it just takes seconds to cut this out. And then unpin, scoot it up a little and over a little, and then just cut the other side. That way you don't have to trim off the excess. The in interfacing instructions always used to say cut out according to the pattern piece and then trim off a half of an inch. Well that means you're cutting it out twice and we only want to take the time to cut it once. So we really like doing it this way. And my interfacing is cut and ready to be fused. Now we're ready to fuse the interfacing to the fabric, but before I do that, I want to just give the fabric a nice steam to smooth out any wrinkles that might have happened. I don't know about you, but sometimes I cut something out, and it's a few weeks before I get around to the next step. So in that period of time, it can create some wrinkles. And then you can place your interfacing on your fabric. Make sure the grainy side is down. And it's ready. Before I fuse, though, I want to check to make sure that nothing's distorted. It's very easy when fabric moves from point A to point B for it to slip. And so you can see that the, inner, that the fabric is not matching the tissue. So I'm going to just pull that edge in. I want the fabric to match the tissue. The neckline, we're cattywampus here as well. So let's straighten that up. Get off here at the bottom. There. Now the pattern and the fabric match each other. Just smooth out the interfacing here. And we're ready to fuse. Generally, it's a good idea to use a press cloth. But I found that this Tailorweight Ultra doesn't seem to weep through to the uh, iron. And so I'm going to be f doing it directly on the fabric, partly because I want you to be able to really see what I'm doing. I'm only putting about the first third of the iron on, and I'm steaming. I'm pushing and steaming and overlapping as I go. When you're fusing, you really do want a cotton cover, and this happens to be muslin on our pressing board, so it works perfectly. The front of the iron is providing steam. The back of the iron is working as well. I've overlapped another half of the iron. So we actually call this zonal fusing. It's overlap, overlap, overlap. The whole iron is working. It takes a good 10 to 15 seconds of steam to fuse properly. And if you completely overlap all the time, you'll get a much better job of the fusing. If you just do this, it's really easy to miss areas. So overlap steam, overlap steam. It takes time to fuse a jacket front. It's not just a second. This is a couple of minutes. With a conventional iron, it usually is all the steam that's in the iron. I happen to have a steam generator iron, and it holds enough steam for quite some time. And for fusing, that's fabulous.